as you'll ever be. Ooh, spooky. 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 There's, a, there's a fog rolling in. Always over here. It's always a little foggy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Slay 13. Lucky number 13. The cabin in the woods. Uh, it's it's one of my all time favorite films. Yeah. Not cabin just horror, not just horror films, just films in general. Easily one of the most influential films uh, on me as a as a filmmaker. Uh, I totally remember seeing this one in theaters too, and having my fucking mind blown to pieces by this movie. Uh, and just like I don't know, it really opened the door for me for like what a horror movie could be. You know, I'm just like this is so weird and it's so like, you know. We talked on Scream the other day and how Scream was a game changer for the genre. And I feel like Cabin in the Woods was also that, you know, like I, you know, where Scream was kind of exclusively for slashers and stuff like that. Like Cabin in the Woods came along and is like, yeah, we know the rules of a horror movie and we're going to lean into that. Like and that and that, that was my big takeaway as a filmmaker is like, don't be afraid of cliches. You know, know your cliches and lean into them. And and if you know your cliches, you can use them to your advantage. Well, I always felt like, whereas Scream honed in on slashers, this one honed in on horror as a genre. Right. Instead of doing like, we'll we'll hone in on one movie. Not it showed what happens if all these sorts of movie circumstances Mm -hmm. could potentially have happened. But this is the one we chose to get this time. Mm hmm. Yeah, and I liked the idea that horror movies were just sacrificial rituals to keep ancient evil gods at bay. Uh, I mean, just what, what a creative idea! Like, come on, that's pretty pretty dope. Like, it, and I, I, it's just not something that can be recreated. And as as great of a movie as Cabin in the Woods is, like, it's one that I feel like if they announced a sequel to this, I would be upset. You yeah. know, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. I. It, does not need a sequel people talk about that a lot and it's like no dude like there's i mean that's that's not you know i'm not saying that you can't figure out something to do with it but like it just doesn't feel necessary especially with the way it ended you know yeah like uh it star stars a a pre pre pre-thor chris hemsworth uh i always forget he's in this movie until i start watching it i'm like that's funny it's funny yeah, because this movie got shelved for a while. Like it was filmed before he did Thor and stuff, but it came out after Thor, because uh, it was just kind of sitting on a shelf for a little while before it finally got to see the light of day. Um, and j- I, I just love all of it. Like the the performances in this, the the writing, you know, the scares, the comedy. Uh, this work, this movie just works on a lot of levels for me. Uh, there, especially seeing it for the first time, like a lot of the things you you don't know are coming, like are shocking. <laughs> You're just like, oh shit! <laughs> like I didn't I didn't expect that to happen. You know? No, yeah. This movie really like I remember when it came out, and I thought it was another, you know, like cabin fever mm-hmm. type of movie. So it's like, yeah, do we really need another one of those? Like mm. Jesus. <laughs> and you know that was good on them for the marketing side because when you do watch this movie, it is like. Oh damn! Yeah, they really did something here. Yeah, I, I, if I'm rem- like remember the marketing correctly, like they did a really good job of hiding away, like the secrets of this movie. And I know, you know, not not to sound like a pretentious asshole, but there's definitely those people who just don't get this movie, who just don't understand this movie like at all. Uh, they're like, I, I don't get it. I don't understand what's happening here. Uh, I know. I watched this with my parents once, and they were just like, "This is." like one of your favorite movies like what the fuck um but just the whole idea of like you know they all start acting like you know their their horror movie stereotypes that they're kind of cast in by the the puppeteers of all of this and uh you know the, but they're not actually these people which i found interesting like you know chris hemsworth is is a scholar like he's not a jock but they do the stuff to him that makes him start acting like a jock and you know the of course and honestly come on now we're uh, you know our, our smokers out there the hero of this story is a stoner 
Marty is like one of the one of the of my favorite characters in a horror movie ever. Like <laughs> Marty's that man. Uh, you know, he comes, he saves the day. He's that kind of character that you become so attached to. Like you hate to see him go, but when he comes back, like the whole theater just like erupted. They're just like, yeah, fucking. When that the the uh, I know that they started making uh, like the the coffee mug bong that he has that like collapses down into a coffee mug. They started putting that into production after this movie came out. Cause so many people wanted those. You don't doubt it. You don't doubt it, man. They, as he said, the cops aren't going to pull over a guy with a giant bong in his car. They fear this man for this man sees farther than they do. <laughs> sure. Bud. What are you sure, stoned? Bud. Fucking. It Marty was only that the, easy. Yeah. Marty's got all the best lines in that movie. Puppeteers. Puppeteers? Pop-Tarts? Did you say you have Pop-Tarts? <laughs> I'm going to go read a book with some pictures in it. <laughs> uh, Cabin in Woods is definitely one you can go back to, watch over and over mm -hmm. again, uh, no matter when, really. you know, yeah. Definitely in October, but no matter when, it's, it's a good one if you like horror movies that are different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely unique. Um, you know, there's definitely been some that have tried to be Cabin in the Woods since its its release, but nobody has succeeded on the level that Cabin in the Woods has. Um, and of course, the ending, like holy shit, like what a finale! Um, you know, when just because you do get that, like you know, it, 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 the setup is Evil Dead. You know, like obviously the whole setup of the movie is basically ripping off of Evil Dead. But once they get there and they go down to the basement and they get to choose what happens to them was always like interesting. And then you've got some nods to Hellraiser and like some other horror movies in there along the way. Of course, the classic uh, merman joke. I'm never going to get to see a merman. Dude, count yourself lucky. The cleanup on those things is horrible. <laughs> and then the, the, the horrible ironic death at the end. Doc, come on. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. It's a great movie. It's a good one. And then uh, another great scene is, uh, I, I think other than Marty, my favorite characters in this movie are the, are the guys running the show down below, played by Richard Jenkins and Bradley Whitford. They do such a great job uh, in those roles. And now, like, anytime I see them in a movie, anytime, like, they're in so much shit. I'm, I always think of this movie when it comes to those two actors. Uh, you know, like when they're watching the other countries do the like their rituals and stuff, and obviously it's supposed to be like foreign horror movies and stuff like that. And it's like Japan's on this hot streak, and it's just like fuck you, fuck you, fuck you to all the little Japanese kids. It's like it's just they got some great moments. They definitely do. They definitely do. It's it's a good one. If you ain't seen it, definitely go out of your way and see it. Yeah, it's funny. It's bloody. It's scary. It's a good time. It's a good time. It's unique. What's that score looking like? I give this one a 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10? Word. Uh, I think it's been like three days, so I guess I'll give a 10, a 10 out of 10 here. Uh, only because, you know, I you know, I know I was saying on It Follows, I docked some points because of rewatchability. It's different for this one for me because I've seen it so many times. I know this movie like the back of my hand. Like, I literally almost died trying to get a copy of this movie on Blu-ray. <laughs> I, I remember because it, it, it came out and I, I was working at McDonald's at the time. And uh, I had to be at work and like I had a very small time window and, I, and it was like raining that day. And I sped clear the fuck across town to Walmart and sped all the way back to work. And I almost like... Uh, lost control of my car, literally just trying to drive to Walmart to buy this movie. Like, I could have done this at any time, but I'm like, no, I got to get this shit right now. Like, I just, I loved it. Uh, and and it's continued to be a very influential movie for me. I, I always go back to this when, when writing and stuff like that. I take a lot from it. So, 10 out of 10 for this guy. 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10. 10 out of 10. Get the movie all around. Go it's check it out. Go check it out if you ain't yet. Slay 13. Like and subscribe, Chase and Shep. Follow us everywhere, YouTube, Twitch, uh, mm -hmm, Facebook, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. ChaseandShep.com, yep, uh, yep. Spotify, yep, that's, yep. Anchor. Mm -hmm. All of them. You know the deal.
Yeah, yeah. You know the deal. You know what's up. Peace. Smooches deuces. <laughs>